Hey everyone, just a little short video today about a couple of substance painter techniques. I'm going to demo them on this fly, which I'm putting the full video of creating out later on, hopefully this week. The two techniques I'm going to look at are for embossing text on metal in a convincing kind of way, and for creating these sorts of seams around plastic components to make them seem more convincingly moulded. I'm going to wipe this project out now, so that we have a clean slate to start from, and I'll see you there. All right. With the model all cleaned up, I'm going to start with displaying the technique for embossing text. Now, we're just going to want to use a fill layer to create the base inset. Give it a black mask, and just give it a name, just so we can recognise it. Of course, the name isn't truly that important, but in a large stack like I might have when I finish this texture for this knife, it could be quite significant. So I'm just going to choose a basic hard brush and select the font little tip for you there. If you search font, you can get all the text from Substance Painter. Pick one that looks kind of appropriate for hard surface. I'm a fan of Jura. I think that looks quite good. Choose that. Just does. Careful not to rearrange my windows in Pontu there. And let's just type a little bit in there. <laughs> not too creative a name, but it'll get the job done. And I'm just going to paste this on here for starters. And you can't actually see it on the knife yet, but there's it on the mask. And I'm going to take away everything except the height. And just set that in. Now, this might be where some people would stop. But I think we can certainly push this a lot further to get a better looking end of the set. So first of all, I'm just going to reduce the height actually. Because I personally find with height, often less is more. And I'm going to add the tiniest, most delicate blur. Just for a bit of smoothness to the text. That'll do nicely. Alright, so we've got it pushing in. But when you push metal in like this and you stamp it, you need to consider that it actually is going to pop out around the edges of the text. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to add an anchor point here. And then I'm going to add another fill layer. This is the top box. Let's add a mask on there. And we're going to use a fill. And we're going to fill it with our bottom text mask. So if we alt click on this to view just the mask, we can see it's being filled up with exactly what we have for the bottom. But this isn't quite right because this is just the same shape. So we're going to use a high pass filter to get a gradient from around the edge. So just choose to add a filter. Let's search for high pass. There it is. And this is what we get. Actually, kind of the opposite of what we're looking for. This middle section still in white, and we have a darker edge around the outside. So all we need to do now is invert it, and the white edge comes around the edge as we want it. And then we're going to do one last thing: is add another levels node, and we're going to use this one to remove the grey from the knife. So let's just take the white edge here and just pull that in a little bit. That's the wrong side, actually. Sorry, we want to pull up to the left there. And you see that reduces us down to really only having the white kind of border around the knife here. Now, depending on how much you want to crisp this up, you can adjust these levels. However, I personally find that the smoother this high pass, the better results you're going to get. Now, once that's on there, all you need to do is choose the section here. Remove everything as we did before except the height and just add a tiny bit to the height. There we go. And now, just feeling this height out a little bit, just to get the best results. You can see that we've got an edge around it. Now, there's one more thing we can do. If we just jump into this again, we can actually choose a radius from the height pass filter to make this look even smoother. Now, that looks pretty good. Getting a tiny bit of stepping there, due to the way that high pass seems to sample it. So, we're going to add another tiny blur on this. Just to smooth things over again. And I mean really tiny. Hardly even noticeable. There we go. And that's pretty smooth. And I'm actually going to slightly reduce the bridges of the high pass again. I pushed things a bit too far with it. That's better. There you can see when the light reflects over the knife area, it looks as if that it really has been stamped into the metal. We have this ridge up around the outside. 
let's move on and have a look at the second technique. All right, so let's have a look at this handle and see if we can use some height on this to increase the visual quality. This folds away my text and boss into a little folder. But let's start as we often do with just one fill layer. That's all we're going to need for this particular piece. And we'll just call this plastic. Because that's pretty much what we're trying to replicate is the effect that plastic has when it is squeezed into an injection mold to form the shapes of like knife handles, gum handles, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to go back to basic hand brush again. I want to get rid of my sort of knife font there. Now all we're going to do, super simple, is just change this to brown red so we can really easily see where we're painting on. And we're just going to want to paint a straight line around the edge of the handle. It doesn't matter if we spill too much or it doesn't even matter if we're particularly inaccurate. If I just hold the shift key down and click and draw a line two, very, very easy. Just go like that. Doesn't matter if I spill off across the center of here. Really, accuracy isn't even that important, so I'm just going to freehand this bit inside here. And I'm going to come along here with the shift click as well. And this is all just adding the mask to our fill layer. Now, I'm just going to choose this here, choose object. I'm just going to clean off my other pieces. If you're trying to add a plastic fill onto your um, model and you're not using individual model pieces like me, you might need to be a little bit more careful, but really, you should be alright. Now, we have this big red line all the way around the outside. All we're going to do next is choose the plastic molding, alt click into it like we often do when we're working with masks, and we're going to start by just adding one filter, and that is the very familiar blur filter. I swear I use it on just about everything. And we're going to want it to blur to about there. See how you can kind of see that it's from about the middle to the edge is now gradiented. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. So you don't want just the edges blurred. You want it to be blurred kind of from the middle to the outside. Next, just another filter. This time we want a warp filter. And this will help us make it look more like plastic. But before that, sorry, I forgot. We're just going to need a levels in between. And we're going to use that to be able to tweak the width to about there. It's perfect. And then we warp. Hmm, not looking too bad. Let's just adjust the styling of the warp just to be a bit less to get a more convincing plastic look. Increase the intensity a little bit there. And that's actually getting us pretty close to where we want to be. Let's check it out here. And all we're going to want to do is very similar to last time. Turn off everything else and just use height. To add a height into it like that. There we go. That's looking more like it. Now it's actually a bit thick and exaggerated. So let's just use this levels again to adjust and make it thinner and cleaner. How about that? Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's a pretty convincing plastic line. And then simply by adding another fill layer, Inside a fold here, I'm just going to hold this handle, move this plastic moulding further up, mask this handle folder to so just be the handle, add this for the black mask and a fill, and simply choose something like a Perlin noise. Check the mask, adjust the scale to be appropriate. Hmm. Yeah, about there is perfect. And then change this too to be height data. Ah, I didn't mask the handle correctly on the folder. There we go, much better. Yep, that certainly gives it a plastic effect. Nice. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you all very much for watching. And another thank you for the... Uh, crazy amount of subs I've gone up. I never thought I would hit 100 or even like 150 or kind of at all actually but to go this quickly over the space of I don't know not not even too many weeks at all uh, has shocked me quite a lot so my sort of sincere genuine thank you. I'm not not quite the uh, YouTuber type so doing these sorts of things at the end of the video going oh thank you very much and um, please like and subscribe and all that kind of business you know it's very disconnected from the sort of reality I'm used to living in, but genuinely I am very thankful for 
the large growth you all have come here and given me. And hopefully I can provide content and videos in the future that will make it worth sticking around. So if you new are new here, let me try and do the YouTube a bit a little bit and tell you to all oh, go on, stick around and subscribe. I'm sure it'll be worth it in the long run when I eventually get some more videos out. But until then, have a good one. Thank you very much.